Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and Happy New Year if you're watching this in 2019. Uh, hopefully some of you will get to watch this before then. I'm hoping to upload it perhaps tonight or tomorrow. It is Saturday. I'm wearing dark blue as I do on Saturday to honor the planet Saturn. It is Saturn's day. I don't often record on a Saturday, so this is a bit new. I was supposed to do this yesterday, but uh, a friend who I haven't heard from for a long time, she got in touch, she said, let's do something. I thought, why not? There has to be some perk for being my own boss and working from home. So that's what I did. This was due to be done yesterday and I shifted it to today. Um, I've been having a look this month at the news, doing the usual browsing over headlines and seeing what's going on. Uh, usually I have quite a few sort of headlines or items that I want to discuss about what's happening in the news. And this time I actually just have one note here, one line, and it just says, Alan Greenspan says, run, run for cover. Now he's not using that word run once, he's using it twice. And I think this is a bit of big news. Um, I don't know if he's for, you know, foretelling the future or saying what's about to happen. Uh, I don't know if there's a fight going on between the powers that be that run the world that, you know, I mean, I know the name Trump, I know the name Theresa May, but I don't know the names of the people who are really running the world, if you know what I mean. So uh, I, I, I don't know what to say about this piece of news. But one thing that I'd like to say in conjunction with what I've been looking at for the month of January is to say that in everybody's overview this month, I have used the phrase re-engineering. And are we up for some greater global financial re-engineering? I don't know. Uh, you know, that, that could be really interesting. So, but I know each of us personally have some re-engineering to do and that's what I'm going to be talking about in our monthly overview. I'm going to give you a very brief overview for all of us and we're going to look at the moon dates and all that kind of thing and then we're just going to hop straight into the monthly overview. So this month we've got two important conjunctions to kick off the year and that's what I'm going to be covering with each of you individually so we're going to cover that. But in terms of moon dates we've got new moon in Sagittarius in Purva Ashada 6 January 2019 uh, at approximately 1.30 in the morning UK time and we've got full moon Cancer in beautiful Pushya Nakshatra happening on the 21st of January 2019 uh, at approximately 5.15 in the morning UK time. So what are the two conjunctions that I really want to look at for all of us? Uh, so we've got Jupiter-Venus conjunction happening in Scorpio for all signs and that's basically for the whole month. Uh, I think it's about till 29 Jan, somewhere thereabouts or maybe even 30 Jan. I'm not, well I did have a look but it's the whole month so I'm just going to say the whole month. Uh, and this is really, I'm kind of thinking that yes, um, certainly relationship with your partner is highlighted uh, and that is, you know, going to be, and that's kind of going to be the case for most people anyway. The um, psychological clinic that I write for, I was speaking with their main psychiatrist who is the director of the whole place and um, she was saying that January and February are the most the busiest months and a lot of couples come in and she said that's the case every single year. So I mean look we've got Jupiter and Venus coming together as well in Scorpio so I don't know if her clinic is going to be particularly flooded this year, it might be. Um, but I do think relationships are going to be highlighted for everybody and if you are single then what's going to be highlighted for you is that um, what's the love that I put out into the world. So I think if you're single, fantastic, because that's a really lovely thing to be contemplating and thinking about. And I actually, before I was putting the notes together for this, like a few days ago, I kind of thought to myself that that's going to be my New Year's resolution. I don't usually have one, but I've 
kind of been thinking about, you know, what do I want to do in 2019? What do I want to achieve? And one of the things I was thinking anyway was, one of the strong things I was thinking was that the thing I can count on in life is me bringing love into me, divine love, connecting up, feeling good, and then giving that out. That is the one thing I can count on. That I, was, I had that strong thought a few days ago and just thinking, how can I do more of that in the world in 2019? How can I, it's kind of like being, I guess, being more loving, but just putting more love into the world, putting good into the world. Like when you are being creative, that energy is emitting into the world and that is beautiful. That The world needs more of that. The world needs, as da, the Dalai Lama said, he said we need more storytellers, more dreamers, more poets, more filmmakers, more, um, you know, people who paint and sculpt and all that kind of thing. He said the world needs more of that. And I agree. The world needs a lot more of that energy. So we've got this lovely Jupiter-Venus conjunction happening all month, which is really nice. And the other conjunction that I wanted to focus on in quite a bit of depth for everybody is, I've called it here the consulting conjunction or the con consultant's conjunction. So we've got Sun, Saturn, Mercury together, uh, all happening in Sagittarius. And I've got here something around re-engineering the intellectual plane or you're going to be re-engineering something. So as you listen to your monthly, I'm going to tell you in what area of life is happening for you and what kind of things you want to be focusing on when it comes to re-engineering. We'll talk about that in a bit more detail in your little report. Um, so we've got the full moon eliminating the past conjunction. Okay, yeah, the conjunction will change. Uh, and I think that happens, I didn't really particularly write the dates for these because I'm mostly just gonna focus on that one conjunction. But why don't we have a look at what's happening around that time of that full moon. So we're looking at about, what did I say, January 21st, didn't I? So we've actually got Sun, Mercury and Ketu conjunct. So for all of the month, we've got that, um, what I'm calling the consulting conjunction or the engineering con conjunction. It's kind of because we've got Sun, well, ideas and creativity. We've got Saturn, who the servant and the builder and, and the materializer of everything. So Sun, Saturn, and we've got Mercury, the young prince, the genius. So it's kind of, to me, it's kind of... Um, the reason I say consulting is if you work for one of those big consultants or an architect, you could say architecting, re-architecting something. Architects, they need to be really creative and have ideas and come up with beautiful fancy things like you think about Frank Lloyd Wright and the beautiful fancy things that he came up with. But okay, he's drawing the design but it has to work in an engineering sense. It's got to work in a nuts and bolts sense. And he used to have to prove, he had this um, design of this beautiful concrete sculpture that was like a lily pad. And everyone was like, you are absolutely mad. There's no way that you can make a building like that. So I think he got like tons and tons of sand poured on top of one of them as a public display to prove to everyone, no, this actually works in the real world. And I, oh God, we should check him out actually. Does he have that conjunction somewhere? This is a really interesting question. I'm curious now. I shouldn't be doing this because I'm, again, I am going off topic. Frank Lloyd Wright, I haven't got him here. Oh, look, I'll do this another time because it's going to take too much time. But I must have a look at um, some architects uh, and double check on this. But I'm kind of feeling that sort of energy with these Sun, Saturn, Mercury, engineering, consulting, the dreamers and thinkers who pin stuff down and, and the ideas men who make it happen in the real world as well. Okay, that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. And that's why Alan Greenspan saying run, run for cover. I mean, maybe it's time for these financiers to, to rethink money, you know, and it's going to be something around that, re-engineering money or something for all of us. But let's have a look, full moon. So then on the 21st of January, full moon, illuminating the past conjunction. So we've got Mercury, Sun, Ketu happening in Capricorn. So Capricorn, we've still got Saturn in operation there, Saturn being the Lord of Capricorn. How I'm kind of seeing this conjunction is, you know, and that's running up until I think about mid-Feb type time. So I think January through to mid-Feb, this is a really fantastic time. To, so you know when you're wanting to build the future and it's like you've got this open kind of energy and you're at the horizon and you're looking out towards the future 
Okay, so picture that. And then what I want you to do is we turn around and we look at the past and we go, okay, how can we fix all of this up or get it ready so that we can then do some future thinking? So I actually kind of think that January to mid-Feb, um, this is really a time to be... And you don't have to dwell on the past. It's not about restructuring or re-engineering the past, but it's it's not that open to the horizon kind of energy. It's more, let's take a look at everything we have. How can we structure all of this so that then we can do our future thinking and our future strategizing? So I really feel like this is a time to be, and, and in many ways you can, and that's what I'm going to be encouraging everyone to do in their little mini readings, is basically to take a look at everything you have in your life how can I reorganize this so that I'm more free to do the things I really care about? And how can I restructure everything that I have? Are there better ways of organizing all that I have, all that I am right now? So it's re-engineering, restructuring, rethinking, reimagining. Sure, use your imagination. Ideas come into this. Um, it is a bit of dream time, but not in a future sort of context, in a how do I re-engineer all that I have to get ready for the future? And, and we are new moon. It is about sowing seed as well. So if you need to do a career change or something like that, sow that seed. So we're talking 6 Jan and it's Purva Ashada. And when I looked up Purva Ashada, one of the beautiful notes I got from Heart Defoe was... Have I taken that out? No. Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. Wow, 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 wow. Imagine that, imagine planting a new seed at a time where there's this, you can be invincible energy. So we're going to take a look at that in depth. This time, guys, I'm not doing transits. I'm not, you know, this is, this is not a transit thing as such. I'm purely looking at the energy of the conjunctions and then I'm going to be asking you a question about each. Okay, so that's what this is. There's no uh, judgment happening here because transit kind of there's a bit of judgment you know it's like oh well Jupiter's happy to be in this house and or Venus isn't happy to be in the 10th and all that kind of thing well, I'm not doing that this time that might be next month so this month I have structured it a little bit differently as well I hope that's okay with you guys I like to do things a bit differently each time keep it fresh keep it interesting keep it a bit different so we are going to kick off with Aries moon Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at two main conjunctions and I'm going to ask you a question to ponder for each. And this is really going to get you thinking and get you looking at your life and how can you... It is a time of re-strategizing, re-engineering, reimagining things okay re-engineering is a big word for everybody this month so we've got Jupiter and Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your eighth house so I've got a note here regardless of karma with your partner what love are you putting out into the world okay so this is about looking at we're not looking about what's coming in but we're looking about what love how can you expand the love that's within you and give that out into the world uh, and yeah, that's, that's basically what this is, I think. And I, I've got a little note here that even if it's just posting an inspirational tweet, you know, it's just, you're doing some small action to put more love into the world. Even if it's, um, giving someone a compliment, you know, just practicing giving people compliments, just tiny, tiny things, you know, you see someone crossing the road and, and they could do with, a bit of help maybe the elderly or it's little things like that putting more love into the world um, through our actions but thinking about it as well we've also got so that's the one conjunction that I want you to think about what love am I putting out into the world because that is the one thing you can count on you can't always count on love coming back in right <laughs> if we don't give it out just to get we, we give it out because we want to and 
you know I think that's um, that's a beautiful thing so the other conjunction that I'm really interested in and excited about this month is the Saturn Sun Mercury conjunction happening in the ninth house for you and on the 6th of January we've got this beautiful new moon now the new moon is happening in Purva Ashada now according to Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda who I'm big big fans of they have got this note that Purva Ashada suggests invincibility so Imagine that we've got a new moon in this area where it's about invincibility. You, you, you know, there's an invincible energy available to us here. So here's my big question. Okay, now this is a big contemplation question. If you are invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true and most real self? That is a very big question. If you were invincible and cannot be defeated, right? So let's say you've got all the money in the world. What would you do for a living? It's that kind of question. But if you were at your most invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true and most real self? Got a note here because it's happening in your ninth house. It might mean changing beliefs. It might mean re-engineering your beliefs it might mean finding some new teachers it might mean rereading an old book that you've read and got some wisdom from and then reading it again to see god look at how i've grown and also how i want to keep growing you know and, and structuring some of that um, I've got a note here for you. It might mean changing jobs as well. I am going to say that here, even though, I mean, the ninth house isn't classically um, that kind of thing as such, but I am going to say that because, and I think that is the case for a lot of people anyway, regardless of which house this is happening. Um, and I've got a note here that it might take years. It might take years for you to change your job. I know. I know what it is to career transition. I know that it's hard because I've done it. I am doing it a second time in my life. The first time I did it, technology to advertising, now advertising to this. So it's like when I did the technology to advertising thing, oh, it took years, but I did it. Um, so I know what a career transition takes. And But planting that seed, 6th of January and the days around that, you've got beautiful energy available to you. So I've got a note here, think strategically and intellectually about this. Okay, so your heart... It, your heart and relationships and you know your partner and, and love and yes that'll that's yep that energy is there but this is for me I think this is kind of the main thing this January we're all going to hit the ground running and we've got to think strategically and intellectually and logically and rationally about our lives with this Saturn Sun Mercury conjunction in place so Aries Moon I hope you are excited about this year I hope you find the energy and time to think about your life in more depth, you know, in a strategic way, in a functional, practical way as well. We've got Saturn here, you know. Um, it's really exciting. It's really, really exciting. So I'm wishing you the best Aries moon and we are now going to meet Taurus moon. Taurus moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time I really just want to look at two conjunctions and I'm going to ask you a question about each conjunction. I'm not particularly looking at transits um, and how planets are feeling in which house. I'm not doing that this month. That might be next month. I don't know. I find out each month I go. I kind of get guidance and do these. So uh, that, this is what I'm really feeling to do this time. So I want to have a look at this Jupiter and Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your seventh house. Okay, so what's this highlighting? Of course, it's highlighting love, it's highlighting relationships. So regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? Okay, so regardless of what they're doing, regardless of what they aren't doing, right? What are you putting out? What, what are you bringing in from the divine and putting out through your heart? Okay, what are you giving to the world? Um, so relationship with partner is definitely highlighted. This could also be business as well. What kind of business do you operate and what are you putting out into the world? Is it loving? Is it kind? Is it good? You know, uh, Predamanja, the sandwich shop in this country, 
Um, they've got vegan only um, sandwich shops popping up everywhere. Apparently, like their purchasing of avocados went up by 800% or something like that. I mean, look at that. They're kind of <laughs> taking good and giving it to the world, you know? They're, they're, they're being conscious about what they bring in and, and what they put out through their business. And I definitely feel like that's a place that is um, trying to put more love into the world through their food, you know, and that comes into this for you. Business, sure, it could be your partner, it could be business. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to see how you can put more love into the world. And yeah, even if it's just posting an inspirational tweet or something like that, you know, or a picture of you smiling, you know, like what would make people happy? Um, so from the, from the extravagance of, you know, 800% avocado sales to just posting a beautiful tweet. And, and that's the sun to satin. Do you know what I mean? That's like from tiny to, to everything and everything in between. Uh, well, which we're coming to now, aren't we? Saturn, sun, mercury. Sorry, I'm going off on tangents, so I'm just too excited. Uh, Saturn, sun, mercury. We are here now, eighth house. This is the conjunction that I really want to be talking about. Um, because we've got this conjunction operating while there's this beautiful new moon, 6th January in Purva Ashada. And in my book, Light on Life, Heart Devo, Robert Svoboda, they mention that uh, Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. Okay, so we have this beautiful energy that's in place. If, and this is my question to you. It's a big question for contemplation. If you were invincible, and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true and most real self? That's a really big question. Okay, so this is for contemplation, this is for thinking about, this is for internalizing. If you were invincible and you can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so that you can be your most true and most real self? Now for some people, for many people, I think, it is about changing jobs. It is about, you know, looking at what you do for a living and going, I'm really not contributing to change on this planet. And that's kind of how I see some careers, that you're either contributing to the problem or you're contributing to the solution. And it's like I had to get out of what I was doing before because I was writing ads for like Shell, Petrol and Bayer and all these things I didn't believe in. And it's like, I don't want to contribute to that anymore. I just can't, you know. Um, and I, I, look, changing jobs takes years. And so don't, this is not something you're just going to achieve in one month. But what I'm saying is that we've got this new moon here. This is the time to plant that seed so that in five years time, you're starting to work part time and do your passion part time. Okay, so now is a really good time to be planting that seed and to be thinking about how do I re-engineer my life? How do I re-strategize my life? Actually, because you're Taurus moon and you've got Saturn in the eighth house, you're, you might be going through some kind of big transition when it comes to career anyway. So for you, this is particularly um, important. But for most signs, I am actually talking about things like career, interestingly. For you, it's particularly so you might be going through um, kind of the next, I think it's until 2020, so it's, you know, these last year or two and the next year type thing, you'll be doing this kind of thing. Um, so this is a time to be thinking strategically and intellectually about this. Be thinking strategically, rationally, um, creatively, logically about these things. It's really exciting, Taurus Moon. It is so exciting. So I am going to wish you well. I'm going to wish you a fantastic start to 2019. And I'm going to wish that, you know, this energy helps you. Hi, Taurus Moon. Sorry about that. The camera got cut as I was speaking to you. And I'm not sure where I finished, but I think I finished, didn't I, with you? I think we were talking about changing jobs. It might take time, plant seed now, um, think strategically and intellectually about this. I'm pretty sure I got to that point. So Taurus Moon, I am wishing you all the best and I'm wishing you a lot of energy. 
um, so that you can make these transitions as you have to and tune into guidance ask for guidance when you're not sure about something tune in and build up your intuition build up your own personal decision making power uh, that's going to be really important for you going forward as well so thank you Taurus Moon and Gemini Moon I want to gel welcome Gemini Moon Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, today we are going to look at two conjunctions that are forming in the month of January. I'm not particularly looking at transits this time. I just want to look at the energy of these two conjunctions and I'm going to ask you a question about each. So this is something to contemplate, something to reflect on and from there, you know, you'll be able to direct your actions, direct your plans for the month and so on. So Jupiter-Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in the sixth house. By the way, I mean, this is kind of just like a weather report. You know what I mean? It's just showing you what energies are available to you. So this, let's have a look at the energy that's available to this beautiful Jupiter and Venus conjunction. It's all about relationships. And, you know, I've got the note here, regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? Okay, that is a big topic for reflection this month. How do you put love into the world? Don't worry about them. Don't worry about the other. Think about, okay, what, what do I put out into the world? Because that is the one thing you can actually count on. And that is the one thing that you can enjoy always. You can always enjoy giving love to somebody. Um, so regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? I've got a note here, examine the lines you draw in relationships really interesting I love the sixth house for this very reason because that's where people draw lines this is where you figure it out you draw lines of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and you have to draw that line and you've got to realize as well you can't get perfection okay you're going to want perfection but you may not be able to get it okay you may not be able to get it how about that never say never so where do you draw the line? And, and, and as you're looking at this concept of drawing the line in relationships, in relation to what's okay with you, what's not okay with you, these are the things I want you to be looking at. Can you up your self-worth? Can you up your self-esteem? Can you up your confidence? Can you up your deservability? That you know what, I deserve love. You know, I'm a, I'm a good person. I'm putting love out in the world. I care about these things. Yeah, because you do. You're tuning into an astrology report, you know. You're very caring and you're very loving. And um, I, want you, I want you to think about, am I getting it back, right? I, I do think that is going to be um, something that you're going to need to look at this month. So let's take a look. And I actually think this is quite exciting. I, I think this is, this is interesting. Um, a lot of potential for you to within your internal world make a lot of headway in a strategic sort of a sense in terms of relationships so let's have a look at the other strategy thing we're doing uh, this month it's the other conjunction the big beautiful conjunction of Saturn Sun Mercury I'm very excited about this one uh, it's happening for you in your seventh house um, that's on the 6th of Jan and we've got a new moon so, well, it's happening until about the 21st of Jan, actually, this conjunction. Um, and then it's going to be Sun, Mercury, Ketu. I talked about that a little bit in the introduction, so you can have a look there. But um, in terms of this conjunction for you in your seventh house, we've got a new moon here. So what's the potential of this energy? What have we got going on? It's very exciting. We've got Purva Ashada. And now Purva Ashada, according to Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda, they've got a note here, Purva Ashada suggests invincibility invincibility so my big question to you is if you were invincible and can't be defeated how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self wow that is a big question right how can you re-engineer your whole life so you can be the most you that you can be um, now because this is happening in your seventh house this could be around creating a business it could be around creating a business where you monetize your natural talents. And that is actually one of the things I do in my individual reading. I'm not bringing this up to try and get you to book it or anything, but like I'm bringing this up because when I designed the um, individual reading, I'm 
I don't know if it's on the website now. I have no idea what's there, but it's about gifts, strengths, and talents, right? And that's important to me because a lot of people, they take their gifts, strengths, and talents for granted because they think, well, everybody can do that. And no, not everybody can do that, right? So there'll be something that's so natural to you that's just like breathing that you'll think, well, everyone can do it. Not everyone can do it. And believe me, if you're not monetizing that, if you're not making a business out of that, or if you're not making the expression of who you are, your career, then it's time to start thinking about that. Can you start thinking about it? And this is a transition that takes years. This is not something you do in one month. But because we've got this new moon, 6th Jan, and it's Purva Shada, and it's about invincibility, and it's about, and we're kind of, we're being, I've got a note here, think strategically and intellectually about this. We've got Sagittarius here. So we're after truth. We're after your personal truth as a soul. We've got the sun here. That's creativity. That's ideas, right? Um, Saturn. So we've got the sun to Saturn. So we've got sun ideas, creativity. We've got Saturn materializing things, right? Making it happen in the real world. There's a servant there. You can do. You can build it, you know? We've got Mercury, the genius prince, going around the sun. So we've got these energies where, and I'm kind of thinking it's consulting, it's re-engineering, it's engineering, it's architecting, it's strategic. It's, it's coming up with the great ideas, the great vision that will work in the practical world. Okay, so there's an intelligence about this conjunction and an intelligence about this energy. So how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self so you can be more you and that could be um, creating a business right it, it could be uh, I mean we are dealing with seventh house it's commitment so what are you committed to what are you what are you committing to right maybe that's something you need to re-engineer well, that's a good one I didn't write that in notes <laughs> but that's something you think about Gemini moon look I could talk for days but uh, I better go to the next one so thank you so much for joining Gemini Moon and I'm going to welcome Cancer Moon Cancer Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now this time I'm looking at two conjunctions I'm not really going through transits in the traditional way that I usually do I'm just looking at each conjunction the energy of the conjunction and then I'm asking you a significant question so that's all I'm doing here today. Uh, so we've got Jupiter-Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your fifth house. So I've got a note here saying, regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? That's an interesting question, right? And how do you put that love into the world? And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day just in terms of what do I want to achieve in 2019? And one of the things I came up with was, and I'm amazed, when I looked at the astrology today, I'm like, oh, well, no wonder I thought about that. Um, it, it matches perfectly. Because we've got Jupiter and Venus, it's expansion of love, right? Um, so I was thinking about how I want to tune in more to divine love and I want to give it out more. That, that was it. That's my goal for 2019. So if you're single, that's it. It's like, how do you give love into the world, right? Um, for you specifically, happening in the fifth house, this is a great time to express love through creativity, through art, um, through painting, through music, through playing with children, through all the beautiful experiences, uh, you know, of the earth that earth has to offer. So um, beautiful fifth house in Scorpio. Wow, it's going deep, huh? Uh, there's a lot to express quite possibly an infinite you know a, a bottomless uh, pit of things <laughs> to express maybe I'm not sure but beautiful I mean I'm loving that for you and your cancer moon I mean you're just gorgeous all over so there you go um, let's have a look at this very serious conjunction that's happening here now Saturn Sun Mercury right that's happening in your sixth house so on the 6th of January we have a new moon and we have this conjunction going on and I just thought this is beautiful let's take a look at it so the new moon is happening in Purva Ashada now according to Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda one of the things they said about Purva Ashada is that it suggests invincibility so my big question to you is if you were invincible and can't be defeated how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? That's a really big question. 
right? That's something really to contemplate. Now, because it's happening in your sixth house, um, I was thinking this would be quite cool. Re-engineering re your notion of perfection. Now, these are things you don't do in a day. Do you know what I mean? These are things you contemplate. You know, every day for a, for a while this conjunction is on. You know, so when you're catching that train home or you're on the bus or you're, you know, be thinking about this. What's your idea of per perfection? And, and is it attainable? And what does it mean? Does it bring you frustration? You know, um, or is it something you like to strive towards? How do you think, what is perfection to you? And re-engineering your notion of perfection. Can you make it a good concept for you? Can you make it a concept that works for you? If it, if it brings frustration, can you change how you think and feel about it? Um, creating more pathways in the abstract or in reality for you to enable your true self to shine more. So creating more pathways. Sixth house is we're drawing lines. We're, we're, we're saying yes to this and no to that. Digestion, right? What does the digestive tract do? Because that's sixth house. It filters. It goes, yep, no, yep, no, yep, no, right? Um, so some kind of re-engineering in your life about how you do that. Um, how you do that process, how you assimilate the good and how you toss out the bad, you know. Part of this energy is about being organized. Could be, you know, you might be getting more organized. One of the things I have to do is I have to organize all the files on my laptop, you know. Maybe you need to reorganize. Um, I've reorganized my whole diary thing as well, how I do my diary. I've changed that whole thing. Um, and I use Google Cal, but I do use a paper one as well. So it could be at that level, but it could be very much in the abstract <laughs> as well because <clears throat> we are dealing with um, Sagittarius and, and that is abstract uh, levels of thinking and, and all that kind of thing as well. So Cancer Moon, <clears throat> I'm wishing you all the best for 2019. I'm very excited for this year for you. Uh, I think it's going to be a good year. I think 2020 is going to be even better. So I am now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, what I'm going to do this month is we're going to take a look at two conjunctions. I'm not really doing transits in the traditional way. We're just going to look at the energy of each of these major conjunctions. And I'm going to ask you a significant question about each one. This is something to ponder and contemplate and meditate on. So we've got Jupiter and Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your fourth house. So I've got the note here and the, the question here that regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? That's something to just examine, right? It's not something to judge or you know, it's not a competition or none of that. It's just about thinking about it. Just thinking about, you know, what love do I put into the world? You know, it's something to feel good about and something to do more of, right? So that is a really good thing to be thinking about with this conjunction here. Jupiter and Venus, an expansion of love, right? So we've got um, you, fourth house. So love in the home. This could be a really good time for you to do some clutter clearing. Now, I'm not a Leo moon, but I'm going to be doing that definitely these next few days, actually. I've got that planned. I just feel the need to do it. So it could be a really good time to clutter clear because it's the home. So it's like getting out old stuff so you can bring in new stuff, bringing more love into the home. Um, and, and what love are you putting out into the world? Well, when you give your things away to charity or sell them or whatever it is you're giving that out into the world maybe you're giving out something really good and, and it's going to help somebody so that's a beautiful energy um so it's a good time to clutter clear great time to learn new recipes right maybe it's time to change your diet maybe it's time to there are so many wonderful vegan recipes and all that and don't worry i'm not strict vegan or any of that i, I eat a bit of everything but you know i've been learning some new um, recipes that are more healthy and uh, I'm always experimenting with that so that could be good to do could be a great time to have friends around um, and, and enjoy yourself have some fun so that is that conjunction now the second conjunction I want to look at is a Saturn Sun Mercury conjunction happening in the whoops sorry happening in the fifth house Saturn Sun Mercury conjunction happening in the fifth house 
6th of January, we've got this beautiful new moon happening, and that's Purva Ashada. Purva Ashada, as I was reading Hart Defoe and Roberts Voboda, they said that Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. And I drew that out as an aha, <clears throat> because it helped me formulate this question. And this is the big question that I want to ask you to contemplate. So if you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? Right? That is something to contemplate. Um, because it's happening for you in the fifth house, I was thinking that this re-engineering could be around how you express yourself creatively. So creating more pathways in the abstract or in reality for you to enable your true self to shine more. Maybe you're starting a YouTube channel on a subject that you absolutely love. Come on, Leo Moon, you're Leo Moon. You should be, you know, on the screen. <laughs> um, you should be doing all this stuff. So maybe you're starting a YouTube channel. Maybe you're starting a new Instagram page. Maybe you're just experimenting. Maybe you're learning Photoshop or doing something, you know, um, where you're re-engineering how you put more you out into the world, okay? And that is a thing to be thinking about. The new moon, we're planting seeds. And if you are looking to career transition, which a lot of signs, this is something that we're looking at for a lot of signs. I mean, this is the place to plant the seeds and that in five years' time, you're doing a part-time job, but then you're part-time doing what you really love. And it might happen sooner. It might happen after one year. It might happen after 10 years. It doesn't matter. But you've got to plant that seed on the 6th of January, right? So I'm really excited for you, Leo Moon, and I'm really excited for your 2019 as well. So thank you so much for joining, and we are now going to welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we're going to have a look at two conjunctions, and I'm not really doing transits this month. I thought we'd let's just look at these conjunctions. Let's just feel the energy of them, and I'm going to ask you a significant question about each conjunction. And that's, that's all I want to do today. So we've got Jupiter and Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your third house. Um, so my question for you is, regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? That's a big question, right? It's not about what are you getting in return. It's not about, um, you know, it's about what, it, what are you putting into the world? And it could be with your partner, but it's putting out into the world. That's big. That's, that's, you know, that could be, a, well, I put out an inspirational tweet on Instagram now and then. You know, it, it's, um, it can be as small as that and it can be uh, as big as you'd like it to be. Because I think that's a wonderful goal to put love out into the world. <clears throat> it's also the one thing that you can count on. You can always count on the love that you're putting out, that you're bringing in from the divine, that you're putting out into the world. You can always count on that. You can't always count on love coming back in, right? That's a whole other ball game. But uh, you can definitely count on what you put out. Now, specifically in the realm for you of third house, so we're talking friends, siblings, associates, peers. Um, in terms of work, I had this thought for you. How do you sell yourself at work? Um, if you are in a sales type profession, yeah, I mean, how do you sell to other people? And a lot of people are in sales type roles. It's a huge function in the business world. And, um, you know, that, that definitely comes here into the third house. So can you, can you be more loving somehow in a professional way, right? Um, in terms of how you present yourself or how you present your product or how you, you know, put things out there. Uh, because media comes into the third house as well, doesn't it? So there's a lot to think about there. Um, let's take a look at the other conjunctions, Saturn-Sun-Mercury conjunctions. So what do we have happening here? Um, that's happening for you in your fourth house. And we've got this beautiful new moon, January the 6th, right? And this conjunction is on, this Saturn-Sun-Mercury conjunction, which I'm calling a consulting conjunction or an engineering type of conjunction. Why? Because we've got Saturn, uh, well, Saturn materializing um, on that outer rim there. Uh, and, you know, the servant, the, the builder, the thing that makes it materialize, right? The sun, the ideas person. So you could call this an architect as well. Uh, ideas, imagination, coming up with that big vision, soul, all that kind of thing. And we've got Mercury, that young genius prince with all the logic and you know, the intelligence there. So for me, this is a very sort of engineering <coughs> type um, conjunction. 
that's one of the ways that I've seen it in people's charts. I've seen it come to life in that way. Um, so now we've got Purva Ashada here. We've got this new moon happening with this conjunction. So Purva Ashada, as I was reading in Hart Defoe's book and Robert Svoboda's book, um, they said Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. So I'm thinking this is great, right? We've got a new moon happening here with this invincible energy. So my big question for you, Virgo Moon, is if you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? That's really quite a big question when you think about it, right? But in the contemplating of that big question, things will occur to you and you will get some ideas for actions and plans and things you want to start putting in place in the real world. Um, because this is happening in your fourth house, I'm saying that re-engineering, you can be looking at how you live, re-engineering how you live. So you're more free to allow more of who you are to shine through into the world. It could be as simple as reorganizing your place. What things can you reorganize so that everything works faster and more efficiently? So that, you know, you're able to have more downtime to then write that book or to learn that instrument or to... Um, create that business plan or whatever it is that you want to do you know uh, this is a really good time to be sowing the seeds and for everybody it is a bit of a thing of you know am I in the right job am I doing a profession where I can be me fully um, re-engineering you know how you live because you want to express you through your career as well right so it's a really big big question big thing to be contemplating and at the new moon this is where we plant the seed so I'm not saying that you make those shifts now it might take you five years it might take you one year it might take you 10 years but you're going to be planting that seed on the 6th of January or thereabouts that would be quite ideal so big time big time definitely Virgo moon and I've got a really good feeling about the year for you I think it's going to be really exciting and I really wish you well so we are now going to welcome Libra moon Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time I'm only looking at two major conjunctions. I'm not going to be going through transits or any of that um, because I just want to look at the conjunction and I'm going to ask you a really big question to ponder about each. So we've got Jupiter and Venus conjunction, conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your second house. Um, my big question for you here is, regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world, right? We've got Jupiter and Venus conjunction, expansion of love, okay? So what love are you putting out into the world? And because it's happening in your second house, um, this is specifically about your family, right? And you've got Scorpio, in-laws, that kind of thing. I mean, so this is really to do with family, you know, how do you love them? And there's no judgment here. There's no right or wrong. There's no, this is just for contemplation. It's just for thinking about. As you think about things, things will occur to you. This energy is on. It's available. This is a good time to be contemplating these kind of things. Um, we're going to have a look at Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunction happening in your third house. So on 6th of January, we have a new moon while this conjunction is on. This conjunction changes at about 21 Jan. <coughs> so... Um, Purva Ashada is where the new moon is happening and this is really, really exciting. When I was reading um, the notes that Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda have made about Purva Ashada, they said Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. So I was like, wow, this is beautiful. This is great energy. So my big question for you with this conjunction is if you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self Apologies, Libra Moon, the camera got cut. Just as I think I was asking you your important question for your Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunction. So how about I start that again? Um, Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunction, third house. Now, 6th of Jan, we've got new moon happening, right? And that conjunction is operational at where that new moon is happening. So um, Puruva Ashada, it's about being invincible. So my big question for you is, if you were invincible, not invisible, I didn't say invisible, did I? Let's start again. If you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? 
It's a really big question and there could be a lot of elements to it. There could be a lot of parts to it. But because for you it's happening in your third house, I'm going to suggest that the re-engineering possibly needs to happen around your notion of courage. So what it means to be courageous, right? Um, and in the re-engineering of how you feel and think about courage, you'll be more free to allow more of who you are to shine through to the world. These are really big concepts, Libra Moon, but because you're Libra Moon, you know, I know that you'll love this and you'll be, um, you'll quite enjoy contemplating it. So I, I'm going to leave you with that. But Libra Moon, I've got a great feeling about your year ahead. I'm sure it's going to be amazing and... I'm now going to welcome Sagittarius, no, not Sagittarius Moon, my apologies Scorpio Moon, I'm welcoming you Scorpio Moon, I'm so sorry. You see the camera just got cut a minute ago and I think I think I need to ground, I think I need to put my feet on the ground even though I'm in an apartment floor, six floors up and I live in the sky. <laughs> As high Vata people like me live in the sky, it's terrible. Uh, I need earth energy. I think I need some earth energy right now. Scorpio moon, welcome. Welcome, Scorpio moon. How about we take a look at these two major conjunctions for you? So we've got, this time I'm not really looking at transits, I'm not doing transits as such. We're going to look at these two major conjunctions and I'm going to ask you a significant question with regards to each conjunction. So let's take a look at Jupiter meet Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your first house. Okay, this is very interesting. So the big question here, it is around love, it is around partnerships. And what I want to ask is regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? So don't worry about what you're getting. Thinking about what are you putting out into the world. Now there's no judgment here. There's no right or wrong. There's no, this is just for contemplation. Okay. So it's just how do you put love into the world? And think about that. And in the thinking of that, you might come up with more ways to put more love into the world. And this kind of, it's so interesting. I was thinking about what's my goal for 2019. And this was a few days ago before I even looked at January astrologically. And I was thinking to myself, I, I know I can count on the love I put into the world. I can count on that. I can't count on what's coming back to me, but I can count on what I put out. And I thought to myself, this year I want to put more love into the world somehow. So, And I'm kind of trying to do that through like my Instagram if I put an inspirational post or I put a video out or, you know, um, and how I interact with people. I help an old lady across the street, all that kind of thing. So it's like what love are you putting out into the world? Now we're looking at the first house for you. So in fact, for you, for you specifically, Scorpio Moon, for nobody else have I had to say this. This is uniquely for you and it's just going to be for you because we're dealing with the first house here. How do you love yourself? It's a self-love question as well, Scorpio Moon, right? How are you loving yourself physically, okay? Are you taking care of your body? Are you resting your body? I know I find it hard to do that sometimes because being high vata and high energy and living in the sky, I find it difficult to sit down and earth and rest and all that kind of thing. Um, so I need to be doing this too. And I mean, look, it's about incorporating more good for yourself routines. So brushing the lymph nodes or brushing your skin or, or putting oil on your skin or juicing, making a nice juice for yourself first thing in the morning. What are you doing for your body physically and how do you love your physical body? Big question for you this month, Scorpio Moon. Now the other question I have for you is around the Saturn-Sun-Mercury conjunction that is happening. It's forming in your second house and it's going to be there till about 21st January. Then it's going to change. It's going to be... Um, Mercury, Ketu, Sun uh, happening in Capricorn. But we've got Sagittarius here and we've got Saturn, Sun, Mercury. And on the 6th of January, you've got a new moon, right? So that new moon is happening in Purva Ashada. Now, when I looked up Hart Defoe and Roberts Verboda, they mentioned that Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. So Purva Ashada, if my big question here for you, Scorpio Moon, is... If you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life 
so you can be your most true self and your most real self? That is actually a really big question, right? Um, this re-engineering your life business, where is that working for you? Now, we're talking second house here. So what I'd be asking you specifically to look at is re-engineering your concept of family so you can experience more love and in terms of receiving more love and giving more love too. So it's re-engineering what is family, right? And, you know, if you're a single person or if you've moved away from your family, maybe you go to a new town and, and you, you, we create families, you know, as we go. Like we might not be with our family of origin um, they might have passed away, we might have moved, there might be arguments, there might be difficulties, there might be hard situations that we're in. But around you, there will be people that you can call family, you know, and um, if you're still in touch with your family of origin, wonderful, of course, and that's most people are, I think. Um, well, I don't know, most people. I think, you know, the concept of normal, what is that? I, I don't think it exists, actually. I don't think there is such a thing as normal. But... Um, it's what society puts out as being normal through TV shows and stuff like that. But no, I think most people are, you know, have a creative view of what family is. And I, and I think re-engineering your concept of family, you know, so that it's, it's, it's that, so that you're able to experience more love. It's just that, you know, and how can you re-engineer your life so that you can be your most true self? I mean, that could be changing career. And I'm kind of suggesting that for everybody to be thinking about that and looking at that. That if you're in a career or a job that you're not happy with, and some of you aren't, you know, and uh, I've been there. I've been in an industry that, you know, after when you do too much spiritual work on yourself, you're like, oh, I can't be doing that anymore. So uh, I'm going through that now. I'm re-engineering my life so that I can be an astrologer. And um, definitely this Saturn-Sun-Mercury conjunction is going to help me for sure. Uh, so I'm excited to be working with this energy. And um, one of the other things I'm doing is I'm kind of just restructuring, reorganizing my cupboards, what's in my cupboards and reorganizing the files on my laptop and just little things, you know, so that things are faster and easier and I can be my, my most true self. I can, you know, engage in, in the things that are important to me even more. So Scorpio Moon, I hope this has given you some really good food for thought. I've got a great feeling about your year ahead. I've got a great feeling about everyone's year ahead, but... You, I definitely feel like it's going to be a good year ahead and um, I'm really excited for you Scorpio Moon so thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon Sagittarius Moon welcome thank you so much for joining now this time I'm not particularly looking at transits as such as I normally do I'm going to be looking at two major conjunctions that are happening in the sky uh, across the month of January so we are looking at Jupiter and Venus conjunction happening all month in Scorpio in your 12th house so for everybody I'm asking this major question and the question is regardless of karma with your partner what love are you putting out into the world okay so it's like we can't always guarantee the love that's coming in but we can be sure of our connection to the divine and the love that we put out through our heart. And, you know, that is just so important. That's what I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about what's my goal for 2019. And that's really, it's funny because I looked at this astrologically today, but a few days ago I had the thought in my head, what do I want to do in 2019? And I thought, I want to put more love into the world or, you know, I want to look at that because that is the one thing I can count on. I can count on me putting love out. I can't you know guarantee anything coming back in um or whatever but i can definitely um work on this concept of me putting putting stuff out and you know that's kind of nice um so then you know i look at things astrologically and i say oh my god jupiter and venus are conjunct all month uh and, and what is jupiter and venus expansion of love you know and, and so regardless of anything to do with your partner what love are you putting out into the world it's really important um how do you receive divine love so we're looking at 12th house so for you guys specifically how do you receive divine love and are you then able to share it with others you know and the other thing is this is 12th house don't feel the need to share it with others uh you know receive the divine love do that you know um and be with it 
don't feel pressure or the need to share it with others. The other thing I wanted to say is um, when I ask this question about what love are you putting out into the world, for all signs, I've been saying um, this is not a thing of judgment, this is not a thing about being hard on yourself or oh, I should do more or this or that. No, no, this is just contemplation. Just think about it. Just contemplate, meditate. Um, because these energies are on and available this month, we can we can look at them and we can contemplate. So uh, let's take a look at the next conjunction for you, Sagittarius Moon. So that is Saturn Sun Mercury conjunct in the first house for you, and around the sixth of January. So that conjunction is going to last till about twenty first Jan, but sixth um, of Jan we've got new Moon happening with this conjunction going on. So new Moon is happening in Purva Shada Sagittarius, and when I looked up Purva Shada Sagittarius in my book. Light on Life by Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda, they said that Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. So my big question for you around this conjunction is if you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? Now that is a really big question, right? And that's going to take some contemplation. Um, but it's about re-engineering your life. And re-engineering what is it for you it's in the first house so guys Sagittarius moon this is about re-engineering your health routines this is about thinking about how you organize your fridge you know how you organize your kitchen or something or you know can I make it can I make a green juice first thing in the morning or um, maybe I do five minutes of exercise uh, every day at a particular time of day um, so it's re-engineering your health routine so you can allow more of your true self to be expressed in the world. And that's really important. It could be incorporating a new vitamin in or something like that. So, um, yeah, I know sometimes I have different vitamins going on. I usually just I try and get it naturally, but, um, but yeah. So Sagittarius Moon, I've got a good feeling about this year for you. I've got a good feeling about this year for everybody, but I am definitely saying this for you. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for your year ahead. I'm excited that we're kicking off the energy with this Saturn Sun Mercury because it's getting us to think about re-engineering. It's getting us to think strategically, logically, rationally, and as well the sun creatively and with our souls as well. So it's a really beautiful way to kickstart the year. So Sagittarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn Moon. Capricorn Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this time I'm not really looking at transits as such. Uh, I'm looking at the two major conjunctions that are forming in the sky in January. Um, and I'm going to tell you where those are. So Jupiter and Venus are conjunct. That's happening all month in Scorpio in the 11th house for you. So my big question around this conjunction is regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? So Jupiter and Venus conjunct, expansion of love, right? So how are you taking love in from the divine, say for example, and putting it out into the world? Um, and the world, why not? Jupiter, make it go big. You put out a nice tweet, uh, something like that. So this is happening in the 11th house for you. So sure, yeah, network, put out a nice tweet indeed, absolutely. And my other questions were, how do you receive accolades? How do you receive compliments? How do you receive love that comes in from your peers? And how do you provide recognition to other people in your network? Maybe you're a boss, maybe you're a manager. Maybe you need to write some emails to some staff members and say, look, I want to congratulate these people because they worked really hard in 2018. You know, maybe it's something like that. So are you recognizing the people around you? Uh, so this is a terrific conjunction here. And that's providing some nice energy for us to think about love. Um, and for you in the 11th house, in the context of your network, your peers, your, your people around you, um, all that kind of thing, and siblings as well. So let's take a look at the other conjunction. We've got Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunct in the 12th house. Now, that is very interesting. We've got that's going to happen until about the 21st of Jan when it then shifts to be Mercury K to Sun conjunction, which is also very interesting. I'll speak about that a little bit in the introduction. Um, on the 6th of January, we've got a new moon happening where this conjunction is happening, so that's very exciting. So that new moon is happening in Purva Shada, Sagittarius. And when I looked up Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda, they mentioned that Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. 
Wow. So that got me really thinking. And I was like, here's the big question I want to ask you. With this energy forming in the sky, this is the thing to contemplate. If you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? That is a really big question, right? And because you've got this new moon happening here, you can plant a seed. And it's the kind of thing where you can plant a seed. So if you wanted to change careers, for example, if re-engineering your life so you can be more authentic means, do you know what, I can't be making these widgets anymore. I want to be doing something spiritual. Or I want to be a chef. Or I want to be a figure skater or whatever it is, right? Like you want to be, express your true self, your artistry, your uniqueness, your beauty, your intellect, whatever it is. So at a new moon time, this is the time we plant the seed, okay? It might take you years to make that transition, right? So you're not going to achieve that in a month, but like it might take you several years to get a part-time job and then to be able to get part-time, do your passion, all that kind of thing. So it takes time. But on the 6th of January and thereabouts where there's that new moon energy, this is a really great time to plant seeds, something to do with re-engineering your life, right? Um, because it's happening in the 12th house for you, I'm kind of saying that this re-engineering also needs to be specifically around the concepts contained within your spiritual self. Um, with, enable, with an aim to enable more of your divine self to manifest in the real world. Again, that's a really, really big concept. Something to contemplate, okay? And you've got a whole month to contemplate it. So Capricorn Moon, I hope you enjoy these energies. And it's a terrific way to start the year with these energies in operation. So I wish you well, Capricorn Moon. I wish you a beautiful 2019. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, I'm not doing the usual looking at transits thing. We're going to look at the two major conjunctions that are forming in the sky in January. And I'm going to ask you a significant question about each conjunction. So you've got, we've all got Jupiter and Venus conjunct happening all month in Scorpio. So we've all got that. And for you, it's happening specifically in your 10th house. Now, this is a big question I want to ask you here. And that is, regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? Okay, so what love do you put out into the world? Now, for, for you, this happening in the 10th house, this is specifically around how does your love come through you into your profession? Okay, uh, how do you express love through your profession? Now, that can be interesting, especially if you work in a very limited sort of an environment. I remember I've worked in, um, when I worked at HSBC in Canary Wharf and when I worked in the Reserve Bank of Australia in Sydney, Australia, um, these are environments where you can't be expressing very much love. So, but what I used to do, because I was always conscious of this, I was always, you know, I would use the word love in an email, right? So, okay, here's an example, business email. I really loved that idea, you know, best wishes or best regards or, you know, don't, you're not signing your emails with love, but like you're trying to get the word love into the email in a clever sort of a way. So obviously you're writing a very professional banky sort of email that's, you know, very professional and of that environment, but I would still, I would try to get the word love into my emails. So I love the idea of this or you know, I love that we are restructuring this team so that this happens or whatever. Like I would try to get that because the energy of the word love, it's for real. It's the, uh, what's that guy's name who, who takes the pictures of the water droplets? Emoto, is that his name? He's a Japanese guy. He takes pictures of um, water droplets. And when you have the, the word love on the bottle, the water droplets are perfect when they're photographed close up. So uh, how does love come through you into your profession? And yeah, when I've been in very sterile environments, I've just been, you know, just even just meditating on the word love while I'm in the environment. Just little things like that when I remember. Obviously not all day, like it's just you do it two, three minutes, you know, <laughs> when you're eating lunch or something. Um, yeah, I've got a note here. It's more about how you be. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, 
I get it. We can't, there are some environments where you can't do too much, but um, I believe there's a lot we can do no matter where we are. So let's have a look at this other conjunction because it's really exciting. I love this conjunction. Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunction happening in your 11th house. Um, that's happening until about 21st Jan and then it shifts and changes a little bit. We're going to have Mercury, Sun, K2 conjunct uh, in Capricorn there. But um, having a look at this conjunction specifically, we've got this beautiful new moon happening on the 6th of January with this conjunction happening. And what I want to ask you is this really, really big question. So get ready for it. Now, where does it come from? So Pruva Ashada, I was reading Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda and they said Pruva Ashada suggests invincibility. So this question got formulated in relation to all these energies here. So the question is, if you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so you can be your most true self and your most real self? It's a big question, right? You're going to have to contemplate this. <clears throat> it is um, <clears throat> it's quite a big question. Now, because for you it's happening in the 11th house, this re-engineering of your life bit, I'm kind of saying re-engineering how you network with others. Um, maybe you're incorporating more social media or you're changing how you use your social media. Maybe you're changing your profile on social media. Um, how you present yourself to others you might be re-engineering that. Good time to refresh your CV. Um, this is a big one, 11th house, re-engineering your life to allow more gains in. Maybe you're creating more avenues for money to come into you, right? So that's really big. So definitely re-engineering because we've got the Saturn Sun Mercury conjunction. And talk about that a bit in the introduction, but if you didn't hear that, basically, I mean, Sun ideas, um, Saturn materializing, building, you know, everything. Uh, in the material, also the builder, like the servant as well. We've got Mercury, the young prince, the little genius that's running around the sun. So we've got this great intelligence, great ideas, great building power, right? With Saturn, he's going to manifest and materialize everything. So this is really an energy of re-architecting, re-engineering. We're, we're looking at things strategically, uh, intelligently, rationally, and of course creatively too. We've got the sun there. So it's a really exciting energy to kickstart the year. So Aquarius Moon, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for your year ahead. We are now going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now I am just going to check on the time quickly because I really hope, oh my gosh, so the camera might drop, but uh, I'm just going to go for it anyway. So we've got two conjunctions that are happening in the sky. I'm going to calm down. It's Pisces moon. We are going to, we are going to breathe <laughs> and I'm going to relax with you, Pisces moon. The camera will fall over, by the way. Um, Pisces moon. We have two conjunctions, major conjunctions happening in the sky that I want to take a look at this month. And in regards to each conjunction, I'm going to ask you a question. And I'm not really doing the traditional looking at transits thing. I'm not doing that this month. I thought, no, I just want to go a bit slow, take a tune into these conjunctions, ask you a big contemplative question about each. That feels like Pisces moon. Sorry about that. The camera got cut. I did say that was going to happen. It was getting towards the end of the 24 minute mark. I keep having to stitch all these files together. One day I'll get a camera that just goes the distance, but until then. Uh, so now as I think I mentioned, forgive me if I've missed out any details here, but I'm not doing transits. We're going to look at two major conjunctions. And the first one we're going to look at is the Jupiter-Venus conjunction, which is happening all month in Scorpio. And for you specifically, it's happening in your ninth house. So what's the big overarching question that I've been asking everyone in regards to this conjunction? Well, it's regardless of karma with your partner, what love are you putting out into the world? And that's the question. Uh, we have Jupiter and Venus conjunction, expansion of love. And I'm thinking, can we expand the love that we put out into the world? And it's really interesting. Before looking at the astrology of this month, a few days ago, I was thinking about what do I want my goal for 2019 to be? And I was thinking, well, the one thing I can count on for sure is the love that I put out into the world, you know, and that I tune into divine love and that I put love out into the world. And I want to do more of that. So... Um, when you're contemplating what love you put out into the world, it's not a thing of judgment or it's not a thing of, you know, I have to do this or I have to put out more. No, no, it's, it's just for contemplation. It's just to think about. It's just to, 
you know, just gently contemplate um, this, this concept. And for you specifically, we are looking at the ninth house. So this is really interesting for you, actually. You've got a really interesting one here. Um, I wanted to ask you more questions, and that was, how does love come through you by what you learn? So is it time to be more selective about what you watch or read or consume intellectually, right? So looking at what you learn and what you take in from man-made systems of thought and maybe being more discerning about it, maybe consuming more of it, maybe changing up your diet, maybe uh, in terms of what you consume. And me, I consume lots of, um, you know, spiritual good stuff too, but I also watch... Uh, I shouldn't admit this, but I watched this really awful show called Made in Chelsea, which I just love. And I just, I don't know, it's these young people that are half my age and it's all about their dating lives and all that kind of thing. But I mean, look, I think it's like if you're eating healthy food, every now and then you might want a cookie, you know, or a little bit of junk food. I think that's okay. So, I mean, um, you know, this is a really interesting one for you, Pisces Moon, looking at intellectually what comes in. And as well, looking intellectually what comes out. And, you know, I mean, that is where I am quite choosy about when I put tweets and um, posts and things like that. It has to be, uh, you know, when I when I do tweets or um, Instagram posts or, or what I'm putting out into the world, I really want that to be high quality and, and good. So, you know, I couldn't make a TV show like that made in Chelsea, but I can certainly watch it now and then. But anyway... Um, I probably shouldn't have admitted that one. That's okay. You're Pisces Moon. I know you're cool about it. You're, I can be myself in front of you. It's fine. Uh, okay, let's have a look at this. Saturn, Sun, Mercury conjunction. This one's awesome. I'm loving this conjunction. I'm really loving that we're starting the year with this conjunction. I think it's fantastic. And where is it happening for you? It's happening in your 10th house. Um, and so, yes, it's Sagittarius for all of us, but for you it's specifically happening in your 10th house. And on the 6th of January, so this conjunction really lasts up until about 21st Jan, up around there. And then on the 6th of January, we have this new moon happening with this conjunction. The new moon is happening in Purva Ashada. Now, as I was reading Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda, they mentioned that Purva Ashada suggests invincibility. So the question I wanted to ask you, and it's a really big question, is if you were invincible and can't be defeated, how would you re-engineer your life so that you can be your most true self and your most real self? It's a really big question. And the re-engineering part comes from that Saturn, Sun, Mercury introduction uh, conjunction. I don't know if I mentioned it in the introduction, but I think I did. And basically, I mean, you think about it, Saturn, Sun, Mercury... We're kind of looking at engineers, we're looking at architects, aren't we? We're looking at people whose sun come up with ideas, highly creative, but Saturn materializing things, looking at how, okay, well, does this have legs? Will it really work in the world? And that's what architects have to do. You know, they have to think, okay, yeah, this is a fantastic looking object, but will it, how will it do in a hurricane and things like that? So they have to know that it's really going to work in the world, uh, in the material manifested world of Saturn. So we've got Saturn, Sun, Mercury. And the Mercury, of course, is a little genius that runs around Sun. So we're kind of, that's why I'm thinking we're looking at how you're re-engineering your life, right? Because we've got the practicality, the practical element. And we've also got the creative element. So you have to think up ideas. Um so for you specifically, Pisces Moon, this is fascinating because it's happening in your 10th house. So for you, this re-engineering of life needs to be around your career. And it needs to be a career where you can be your authentic self. And my goodness, do I have some experience in this. I am doing that myself right now. I am, you know, this journey of leaving advertising and coming into my profession of what I want to do, where I can fully be myself. You know, this profession, I really hope I can make this work. And I don't 100% know if I can. That's what makes it exciting. I've got Rahu in the place where, you know, I should be doing all this. So that's why it's the unknown as well. Rahu is the unknown. Um, so I'm taking steps into the unknown. I'm loving it, of course, but it is scary. And I understand the difficulties of 
shifting career and doing a more spiritual, spiritually based career or, or something that's different. That you know you're at a party and people ask you what you do for a living. You don't particularly want to say, "Oh, I'm an astrologer." Like you, you know, so I, I probably I, I still do say writer for now, um, but I'm thinking content creator. I'm thinking that's got to be the be the new thing. And I still do work three days a month in. Um, but thank God, yes, I'm in advertising, but I'm writing for a psychiatric clinic. So every single thing I write matches up with what I'm doing here as well. So the universe will support you, okay? This is what I'm saying. When you make that change, when you go, do you know what? I want to change this career. I don't want to be, I don't, not feeling it in accountancy. It's just not happening. Um, you know, and I was actually good at accounting when I was at university. I liked it very much, but you know, it's not everybody's thing, is it? And just like astrology might not be everyone's thing. Someone might be in astrology and going, oh, I want to be an accountant. I don't know. But like the thing is that wherever you are, and if you're there and you're going, this isn't me, you're going to have to start making steps towards a career that is you. Whatever that is, right? You might want to be a sculptor or you might want to um, make blinds for windows. Maybe you've got some beautiful, new, innovative thing to give to the world in some way. So you've got to re-engineer your career. You've got to re-engineer your life so that you can make steps towards that new profession. Now, this is not something you're going to achieve in the month of January, but on the 6th of Jan, you've got the opportunity to plant a seed. We have a new moon, so you can plant a seed. Um, so, And it's the kind of thing that in five years' time, you look back and you go, wow, I'm so glad I started to think in a different way in 2019. I'm so glad I started that. So, And maybe you are transitioning. Maybe you're in the same situation as me and you're kind of going, I'm transitioning, but it's hard. Keep going. Keep re-engineering. Keep rethinking. Keep restructuring the finances. Keep doing the things that you can do, you know. And and, uh, Pisces Moon, this is just between you and me, but I probably will tell this to everyone at some point. But, you know, little things like I cut my own hair. Do you know what I mean? And I once said that at a party with all these hairdressers were there and, and one of them said, she goes, yeah, I can tell. I was like, oh, thanks. Wow. And she was really like not nice about it, but that's okay. But I was just so happy. I, don't, I really don't care because the first time I started doing it, this is a YouTuber thing to do. All YouTubers are doing this. But it's like, how do we re-engineer our life so that we can pursue our passion? And yeah, I, have, I had to give up certain things. So I give them up. It's fine. Uh, I love it. No, I don't mind. And even when that hairdresser was like, yeah, I can tell you cut your own hair. I was just like laughing inside. I was smiling on the outside. I was like, okay, you don't like it, but I'm happy. And I remember the first time when I cut my own hair, I felt so empowered. I felt so good. I felt so fantastic. I felt like, this is awesome. I felt like I was taking my power back from the whole world. I was like, this is great. So anyway, Pisces Moon, I'm just trying to relate and connect that if you are trying to change your profession and you're finding it hard I relate to that Uh, you know I've had down days about that and it's not easy and I'm thick in the middle of my transition you know it's I'm still making it happen day by day Uh, you know I feel like it's a few years away before I will be established and comfortable doing what I'm doing but um, we have to make the steps and we have to encourage each other and we have to cheer each other on and we have to be there for each other and look I'm here for you you know like if you want to give me a comment or something I love finishing with you Pisces Moon I'm going to close this file now because I think we've we've done everything that we needed to do here today and look if you have any questions if anything you want to ask me anything um, just put it in the comments below or send me an email or whatever it is and uh, I really love connecting with all of you guys I love all the interaction you know on the channel and um, please subscribe if you haven't already Um, interact if you feel like it of course leave a comment and uh, I'll see you next time